Hey guys, what's up and welcome to another RMA Fire tutorial. Today, um, I want to show you guys how to do a reveal, a type reveal or whatever kind of reveal, in this case with type, um, using vellum cloth. Um, so a while ago I saw this somewhere, I don't know where, uh, I can't even remember, but I remember it, I thought it was really cool how like the cloth kind of like expanded outwards and created the typography so let's have a look at how we would go about creating something like that all right guys so inside of houdini um i'm just gonna drop down a font and if we go in here we can change the name to whatever so we're gonna call it squish or you know whatever you want and you can change the font here to whatever you feel like it's appropriate for this um, I'm gonna just do that and then I'm gonna do an extrude poly extrude here and then here you want to you want to extrude it a little bit um, come out of my camera to see you're gonna make sure to enable the output back so that now we have the squish um, ready to go then what we're gonna do is a VDB from polygons because I want to remesh the geometry and I like doing it with VDBs um, but we're gonna need a lower value to 0 0.01 or something like that and then you want to convert VDB and you want to select polygons so now as you can see it's it's denser um, the higher resolution the different result it doesn't necessarily mean that it's gonna be better but um but yeah I recommend going something like like um yeah something like this where it's a decent amount of polygons okay uh now what we're gonna do is um new vellum cloth but before we turn it into cloth let's do a uv texture because i mean in case you guys want to have uvs on it it's good to do that before the simulation there's ways of uh uving it post sim um but i like to do it before uh, so let's see UV texture. Let's do something like like a uh, face maybe. That's gonna give us a a nice nice result. Um, all right. So with that said, let's plug this into our vellum cloth. Come back into our camera, and then let's do our vellum solver. On our Vellum Solver, we're gonna get rid of the gravity and then we're gonna go inside and we're gonna do a pop attract. We connect this here and the point the point where this is gonna attract it is to the zero. So all we need to do is control the forces here, increase it a little bit. And if we go ahead and hit play, then this is gonna be squished into the center. And the cool thing is like this can be for anything like you can have the 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 attract somewhere else located in your scene and it's gonna attract the cloth the same way as if we were dealing with particles so i'm gonna just let it let it cook and then i'll show you guys what this is i'm gonna just drop a file cache and do squish sim i think uh, i'm just gonna do something like a hundred frames and i'll be right back all right guys i'm back and if you can see we scrub down we get this like really cool squish in and squish out so now what i want to do is like let's have a look at the amount of frames that we need like it's basically just 30 frames so we can do a time warp in the end, connect this, and then we can say, we want this to only happen in 50 frames, and we want the first frame to be frame 50 and go back to one. So let's have a look. Let's make it 
30 instead. So that seems to be working. Um, we we could blend into another sim, like um, another bit of the simulation, so it doesn't end up being something like fully static in the end. But maybe that's something I cover on the next tutorial, um, just so that you guys can take this to the next level. Let's turn off our UVs and let's have let's have a look at what this looks like without the UVs. And um, let's just apply a. A plasticky material to it so that it feels like squishy and um and fun so let's come out of here let's just set up some depth of field by hitting z on your viewport um move this to the center and like make this shorter and uh, enable our depth of field i'm gonna drop down a dome and on our dome let's select one of my HDRI assets that I have here on my assets I'm going to turn it off on the viewport and on my background um, Come into my out and type redshift render I'm gonna open up my render view and I'm also gonna enable my motion blur And here, if we go to render, sampling, and velocity blur, and I enable that, I'm gonna type redshift RS standard. Standard texture, and then redshift material. I mean, RS standard material, and then redshift material, and we're gonna call this like plastic or something. Let's come here into our font and select the plastic material. And off the bat, let's just have a look to see what we have to work with. So this is what it looks like with our default material. What I want to do is uh, reduce the roughness, change the color. And uh, let me just double check. Pause this render for a sec. And I'm just gonna delete the attributes that I don't need by typing star is going to remove all the attributes but then if you do the shift and and six it'll give you this little back tick or like not back tick but it's kind of like um what you call it like a little mountain shape um and i don't want to delete my velocity um i also don't want to delete my uvs which is a vertex attribute. So if we middle click, you see that we have vertex UV and um, our V for velocity. Yeah, let's see if this clean geo renders properly. And it does. Um, and then here you can mess with a few things. Like if we add a little bit of transmission to it, it's gonna look nice and um, maybe we add a little bit of that coating and increase a little bit of that roughness on it and let's have a look uh, and there you go guys Th this would be the first part of this tutorial and on the second one I can show you how we can add some movement after the thing has finished inflating